Hello and welcome to my session. This is about developing apps for use with Zebra Workstation Connect, a new solution from Zebra Technologies that I personally believe is a game changer. My name is Eddie Correa and I'm a digital content specialist. I work on Tech Docs, which is the website that houses all of Zebra's developer and solutions documentation. So what is Zebra Workstation Connect? Well, this is a solution that turns a mobile device into a desktop system. It allows you to walk up to a monitor, plug it in, and, and just act like it's a desktop. I'll tell you all about the solution and how your apps might need to change in order to work properly on this solution. We, we see some key uh, markets for, uh, for this solution. There are many, but the first few that we'd like to talk about are retail, warehousing, healthcare, and transportation. The, the center of the solution is the docking cradle. This is the workstation docking cradle, and it provides connections to an HDMI monitor, a wired ethernet network, and four USB ports, um, one of which is USB 3.0 for high-speed data transfers, if, if that's something that you need. The others can be used for connecting a keyboard, a, uh, a mouse, and another peripheral, say uh, a USB scanner, for example. Um, the device's Wi-Fi also continues to operate, so if that's how you want your solution to work, that's okay too. So the solution leverages Android desktop mode, which um, allows a device to present a completely separate set of applications and icons and everything else on a separate monitor and treat those as if they're running in a completely separate computer. So it's a pretty good scenario and we'll get into how it looks and feels later on. Um, the requirements right now are of course the, the workstation docking cradle and a supported Zebra device. Right now, the TC52AX is the one and only device that Zebra makes that supports this solution, but more are coming. And of course, Android 11 to make it all happen. So desktop mode, this is the primary mode of operation for the solution. And it allows, like I said, an external monitor to appear to work independently of the mobile device, but it's all happening right there on the device. It displays a separate set of apps and data on the monitor, and that's totally separate from the device. You can still do both. All apps can accept input from the keyboard, mouse, and the touch screen. Uh, so you're tapping on the device, that's all still working. The Zebra Workstation Connect app is what makes this all possible. And there's lots of magic happening, including, um, including a secondary launcher that um, that's a, a relatively new feature um, that's been introduced with Android, um, Android desktop mode. And so that's, that's really the key to the, to the whole solution. Um, by the way, the, the tablet that you're looking at is the ET5X, and that is not quite available yet, but it's coming soon. Just want to make you aware of that. Okay, so into the general features, um, desktop mode, handles all communications. The, the, um, the Zebra Workstation Connect app takes care of everything. Obviously it does because that's the only thing that's, that's running there. Um, it stores the display resolution settings, app shortcuts, um, other user preferences for, uh, for the device. And we'll get into that, that a little bit later. Um, it presents the preferred desktop on the monitor. So if the user has a custom wallpaper or perhaps the organization has deployed a, um, a wallpaper that's to be used company-wide, then that's going to be displayed there as the desktop wallpaper. Um, content is unique between the monitor and the, um, and the device. Notifications that come into the device are displayed on the monitor. That's pretty key. Um, if you're sitting there working on your monitor screen and a, and a notification comes up on the device, it's not going to do the user much good if they don't know it's there. So uh, the notifications do get replicated on the, um, on the device and you can even respond. We'll look at that a little bit more later. Um, device settings such as audio volume and network can be modified. Audio volume is probably one of the bigger things um, that most people try to adjust. 
and that can be done right there on the monitor. Again, we'll see that later. Um, it displays icons of running apps, and uh, you can click to the different apps, just like you can on a Windows workstation. You can um, you can switch apps very easily and very quickly uh, right through the desktop screen. Um, a quick note about the other mode that's available with this solution, and that's mirror mode. This mode displays the same content on the monitor as it does on the device. Um, the only exception is that it's uh, the orientation is adjusted uh, so that it's, you know, you're not looking at it sideways. <clears throat> if um, if Z Zebra Workstation Connect app is not installed on the device, then uh, mirror mode is the default when the device is connected to a dock that's connected to a monitor. Um, so, you know, this is the easiest way to get started. You can simply install the required OS on the device. And there's some certain components in the Zebra uh, OS image that are required there. So you get the right one on there, plug it into a cradle, and that's it. You're done. You are ready and set up and ready to go. So if mirror mode is adequate for the use case of your organization, then there's nothing more to do. However, I think you're gonna like what you're gonna see next because there's a lot more you can do with this solution than just mirror the device. For example, now this is a, this is a sample of the, um, of the desktop. This is the default desktop, not including the icons that are pointed to by the arrows, but this is the default desktop. As you can see, um, there's a, a, a lots of real estate here for, um, for application icons, shortcuts, so you can, create and deploy the shortcuts that correspond to the applications that you want your users to run, your corporate apps. Down at the bottom on the left-hand side is the All Apps button. That is the same as swiping up on a device to see all of the apps that are available on the device for launching. And I'll show you what that looks like in a little bit. Um, to the right of that are the Back button and the Home button. Those are replicated uh, from the device itself. So you're not cutting yourself off from those functions when you plug in the dock. So if your apps use those functions, they are available to you right on the desktop. And then over on the right is the, um, uh, it's the volume icon, the um, network connection icon. You can see that we're on Wi-Fi and got a pretty good signal um, and so on. We'll, we'll talk more about those things um, as we go along. Um, the taskbar also allows you to easily identify which apps are running uh, on, on the system. Uh, on the right-hand side are apps running on the device, and there's a little blue icon, a circular icon that indicates that that's a device app, a device running app. And then on the left are, um, are apps that are running on the desktop. And as you can see, um, you can, by right-clicking on those, you can... Um, move them to the desktop or the, or, or the device as needed by the, um, uh, by the user. Um, and we'll get more, again, we'll get more into that as to why you would wanna do that. Um, you can also view uh, um, and respond to notifications here. So as I mentioned earlier, the, this is where the notifications pop up and you can click on them and respond, do whatever you might wanna do. Uh, you can show and change the audio volume, date and time, network settings, Wi-Fi settings, whatever, right through here. Um, these settings, these settings, fragments, they're called. Um, if you click on one, it launches the, um, the, a small version of the settings panel and allows you to make changes to those. And administrators can control a user's access to those. So if that was something you didn't want to allow anybody to touch or change, of course, that's all possible. Um, charging status uh, of the device battery, it's useful. Um, you wanna work on your desktop and then when the device is charged, you say, okay, there it is, ready to go. I can pick up and go collect some more inventory data <clears throat> or whatever. This is the um, all apps screen. Again, similar to swiping up on the device, it shows you all of the apps that are available to launch. Also, an administrator can restrict access to this. So if, if the application shortcuts are all you want them to be able to access, then you can prevent them from getting access to any of these additional apps. 
So let's talk about um, administrator features uh, a little bit here, um, just for some context and um, to let you know what is and is not possible on the, um, on the solution. So you, you, all settings of the uh, Zebra Workstation Connect solution are manageable through Stave now or through an EMM if it supports the, the necessary protocols um, of, of the Zebra staging system which many major ones do. You can create actions such as launching or quitting an app that execute when the device is docked or when it's undocked. So for example, um, let's say, use the warehouse example. I'm, I'm in the warehouse, I'm receiving an order. I've got my handheld device at the loading dock. I'm scanning items as they come in, boxes, crates, whatever. Once I've scanned all the items that have come in with that shipment, I can walk up to the dock, place the device in the dock. My app knows that I'm docked and it may launch another app on the desktop, for instance, that collects the scanned data and sends it to a server for further processing or whatever. Um, so, so that's one example of how you might want to configure an app to perform an action when, uh, when the device is docked or undocked. More on that later. Um, you can move an app to the device when it's undocked. So, for instance, if there's an app that you want your users to, um, to always have in the foreground, whether it's on the desktop or the device, you can configure the app that way. So if I'm sitting at the desktop working there and I want to go, um, I don't know, rescan or do some picking or whatever it is, um, I can remove the device from the dock, the app that I was just using, moves to the device and provides a seamless workflow experience. Pretty terrific stuff. Um, you can configure app launch behavior for desktop versus uh, device. So for instance, um, you can have your app run, for instance, in full screen mode, which I suppose most apps would, only when it's on the device. And developers, you'll need to pay attention to some stuff I'm going to cover later about how to you know how and why you would want to make sure that this that this is set properly, um, and so you know, and if it's launched, so in other words, if it's going to launch on the device, it runs one way. If it's going to launch in desktop mode, it runs another way. For instance, with resizable windows and and so on. And again, more on that later. Um, you can create and remove app launcher icons shortcuts on the desktop. It's so as I said before, administrators can create and deploy those shortcuts enterprise-wide or perhaps for a particular location uh, based on the apps that they want running in that location. You can change the sort order of the apps on the desktop. You can sort alphabetically or by creation date. Uh, you can suppress the display of system app icons. If you've ever, if you've ever gone into the, um, to the app uh, settings panel on an Android device, you know that there's a lot of services that are running in the background. Most of them are out of sight um, to the user, but uh, they're there and they're necessary to, uh, to keep that Android system running properly. Uh, one downside to that is that they also appear in the, in the right-hand side of the taskbar as applications and potentially, I mean, there's a lot of them that's pretty cluttered and potentially uh, someone could start shutting them off and cripple the device. And so you don't want that to happen. So you can suppress the display of those particular system icons so that it doesn't clutter up the desktop and cause risk of failure out there. Um, you can set the desktop and lock screen wallpaper. So again, corporate images or, um, you know, user login screen, whatever you want, you can, you can set that up uh, as you desire for your company. You can change the uh, desktop orientation and resolution. So for instance, if location A has 21 inch monitors and location B has 23 inch monitors, you can adjust the, the desktop resolution accordingly for various locations in your organization. And you can also select keyboard layouts. So if you want to localize it for a particular language, you can do that. Okay, on to developer features and capabilities. Um, 
again, you can create actions that associate with your app so that whenever that app is docked or undocked, uh, it can do perform a certain activity or behavior. You can move a running app from the desktop to the device and vice versa. If that's you know something that uh, is helpful for your app to continue the workflow or to work properly. You can configure app launch behavior for device versus desktop. Um, and the key to that, one of the one of the keys is to determine what kind of monitor you're plugging into. So that you can programmatically obtain the display ID for the monitor that you're connecting with and then adjust your display settings accordingly. So that's a pretty neat piece of magic if it's done right. And then um, you can monitor the docking status of the device. Obviously, if you're um, configuring it to, to perform certain activities, you want to um, be able to know when it's docked and undocked. So I'll talk to you a little bit more about how to make that happen. Um, <clears throat> so next, next are the development guidelines. Um, and here are some of the things that developers need to really know in order to make sure that their um, that their apps are functioning properly, uh, mobile device apps are often configured with a fixed window size. Obviously, since there's not much sense in making the window smaller than the maximum size it can be on a little device, you want to have as much real estate for your app as you can. However, this imposes limits when organizing multiple apps on a desktop. Uh, the ability to resize the window is important if you want to have multiple apps running um, at the at the same time that you can access easily by clicking. So inside the developer options of the device, um, it, it might be helpful to force activities to be resizable. This is usually off for apps that have only run on mobile, uh, you know, why else would you have, why would you have it on? So um, this feature, uh, you probably want to activate this. Um, and the one warning to that would be, be, make sure you test your applications thoroughly before you deploy, uh, because this can cause behavior that you might not have expected. Another, uh, another important attribute of an app that, uh, that might not be active uh, for apps that have run only on mobile is the ability to run multiple windows. On Android, you run an activity, it runs in a window, you run another activity, it runs in another window. Um, they, don't, they don't usually coincide. Uh, so apps that are built as non-resizable exhibit specific behaviors when launching on the desktop and moving from the desktop to the device and vice versa. So you want to um, make sure that you build uh, or modify your app so that it's ready for uh, multiple windows. And this is simply done with a, a statement in your manifest. You can get this statement as well as all the other code um, from the presentation, which we will be available after this, or on Tech Docs. And you can, all of the information that you're seeing in this presentation is available on Tech Docs at techdocs.zebra.com slash ZWC, Zebra Workstation Connect. And I'll give you that URL again later, and it's also at the end. <clears throat> also, another thing to worry about is um, to refresh suppression um, or to, su to suppress refresh, I should say. Um, sometimes due to sort of quirks in the, in the refresh uh, process or class, um, you get a looping effect and what that looks like is flickering on the screen. So um, when you're moving from desktop to device, you could get that. And to help suppress that, there's a, a another manifest command that you need to enter. And again, pick up the code at techdocs.zebra.com slash CWC. Uh, the other thing you need to do is to monitor docking events. And um, uh, th these are all handled inside of the um, action doc event intent action. And th th the way to set this up is to set up a broadcast and then monitor that. Um, or set up a broadcast receiver rather and monitor that. And we give you all the code for that. So go ahead and, um, and visit techdocs.zebra.com slash ZWC. Um, 
to pick up that. Uh, here's, here's the code for querying the external monitor. Uh, this allows you programmatically to inquire as to uh, what type of monitor you're connected with. And this, this works through the HDMI um, display ID uh, communication bus. And um, <clears throat> then you can uh, adjust your app accordingly. A couple of other things you need to know. The presentation class is what allows an app to show content on the secondary display. When developing or working with apps that display content on an external monitor, it's helpful to understand this class and its related context, display and router classes. Um, we're gonna rely on you to go and read up on that and understand those classes if you don't already. Um, also for starting tasks, Zebra recommends the following Android developer guidance for starting a new task. So be sure to visit those links. I won't give you the URL again. Hopefully you've memorized it by now. Okay, on to the usage notes. These, these notes are important and they represent some of the behaviors that are inherent in the solution, some of which are out of our control due to Zebra or due to Android limitations or you know quirks or whatever. Um, and some are things that we're actively working to improve. And believe me, we're we're working on this solution quite hard. <clears throat> so let's get started. Some apps, when maximized or minimized, cause the background color on the secondary screen to momentarily change to black. Uh, it doesn't affect the application's performance or anything that's going on. It just changes the background color for some reason. And um, it should return on its own. Uh, hopefully it won't impact your user too much, except for maybe leaving them with a quizzical look on their face. Um, any camera app running on the device will quit. If any other app that uses the camera is launched on the secondary screen, so, and this is pretty logical if you think about it, Th this is uh, due to a limitation of the device. You can't give access to the camera to more than one app at a time. So if you're running a, an app on the device that uses the imager or the camera, um, for instance, you, you won't be able to scan that way. Um, you, you, I would, I'm going out on a limb here, you'd probably be able to you probably have to hook up a separate scanner. But anyway, um, so if a, if a camera app is running on the device, it's gonna quit if you try to launch a camera app on the desktop. Only one, you know, there could be only one, just like the Highlander. Some apps by default do not display on the soft input panel, the virtual keyboard um, on the secondary screen. Uh, so that's actually good because if you're running an app on the desktop monitor, which, Android refers to as the secondary screen. The device is always the primary. Uh, if you're running an app there, why would you want the virtual keyboard? You've got a physical keyboard hooked up. So uh, there's no need for the virtual keyboard to appear and to clog up, to clog up the real estate. And if it is there, you probably want to set your app to get rid of it. Mobile apps that run in full screen mode on the device by default run in full screen mode on the secondary screen makes sense. It's going to keep the same preference. So uh, if you want to prevent your app from running in full screen mode on the when it's launched on the desktop, then you need to make some adjustments to your app. Apps designed to open only in the primary screen will open there, even if they're launched from the All Apps button on the secondary screen. So if you've told your app only to run on the primary screen, only to run on the device, then it will do that. It will, it will follow that instruction, even if you launched it from the desktop. So the solution is to launch it from the desktop and then move it, select move to desktop when it appear, when its icon appears in the taskbar. Uh, more general usage notes, app pop-ups and or submenus are sometimes partially obscured by the desktop taskbar when the app is maximized. So 
that's pretty common. You know, apps sometimes draw over each other. Um, you know, the way to the way to handle that is just to be aware of it and either set your window size smaller or you know um, try to deal with it in other ways. Zebra recommends avoiding the use of application pinning, sometimes known as kiosk mode. Uh, kiosk mode is like, um, you know, I don't know, you might see a price checker at Walmart. That's an app that's running. And that's the only app that runs. You can't quit, you can't exit, you can't go back, you can't do anything. All it does is scan prices and show you product information. That's like a kiosk app. Um, we don't recommend using those. Just stay away from those when you're um, running in desktop mode. And split screen, uh, running apps side by side. Obviously, that's not going to work uh, if the device is docked. You um, you need to avoid that mode uh, when trying to run apps in, uh, in desktop mode. Apps that implement a floating button, that's called a toggle head. Um, that feature can only be used on the primary screen. Um, one example of a toggle head app is like the uh, window, uh, Facebook uh, Messenger. You, you, if someone sends you a message, a little, little round icon appears on your device, and that no alerts you to that there's a message. You can drag it around. You can move it around. Um, that's a toggle head. They don't work on the desktop. Um, oops, I accidentally skipped that last one. Some apps that restrict activities to a fixed orientation may cause a flickering effect in the secondary screen. Um, yeah, this is another sort of bug in, I believe in one or more of the Android classes. Uh, the, way to, the way to solve that is just to hit the back button on the taskbar. I mentioned the back button earlier that's replicated uh, from the device. So that should solve that problem. Uh, more usage notes, this relates directly to audio. If audio is desired on the speaker, the device speaker uh, of a device that's docked, it must be selected manually using the audio settings panel. Um, a little more about audio. The, the default channel for audio for the Zebra Workstation Connect solution is the HDMI bus. Um, HDMI, as you know, carries audio signals as well as video. So if the monitor that you're plugging into has speakers or a headphone jack with speakers connected to it, it the sound will automatically come out of those speakers. If a, uh, if a, let's say, a USB speaker system is plugged into the cradle, then the sound will come out of that. I think that takes precedence. Um, and if, if neither of those are available, your app won't play any sound or the user won't be able to hear the sound it, unless you manually route it to the device speaker. Um, I know the engineers are working on that, but I'm not sure if they're going to be able to fix it. But I think that's something that they are trying to uh, work on. Um, also, if you have an Android device, you've no doubt seen that little pesky message that says, when you try to increase the volume, it'll say, you know, increasing the volume past a certain level can damage your hearing. Um, thank you, Android, for telling me that. Um, and that message still appears on the device. So if you're trying to increase the volume, even if it's on the desktop, that, that message could pop up on the device and you need to just hit OK on the device screen in order to dismiss it and, and increase your volume. Otherwise, the user might wonder why the volume isn't responding to their slider. Um, a couple things about screen resolution. For low screen resolution settings, the secondary screen might omit some uh, or might omit some of the shortcuts that are created on the desktop. And if you think about it, that makes sense. You know, you've got a, a desktop that has, let's say, 10 icons on it. If it draws bigger than the, 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 than the monitor can physically display, then some of those icons will be drawn off of the, you know, beyond the borders of the monitor. Um, sometimes redocking the device will uh, make, you know, more icons appear uh, but 
my advice would be to um, limit the number of icons, uh, shortcut icons that you create so that um, you don't run into that problem. Also, similar issue, um, application borders can sometimes draw beyond the edges of the secondary screen when the screen's resolution is changed. So, you know, that, that's if the device resolution exceeds the monitor. So, you know, I guess that could be if you're deploying the solution to older monitors or, you know, some of the less expensive uh, monitors that have lower resolution than some of Zebra's very high res devices uh, offer, then, um, then that can cause display issues. So you want to, again, you know, folks, it's always critical to do your testing on every possible scenario before you deploy. That's another example of why you need to do that. Um, some usage notes for administrators. When managed configurations are deployed to a docked device, the settings are applied the next time the device is docked. Uh, managed configurations use the Android um, app restrictions specifications, and those are uh, those are deployed through Zebra OEM config um, or your e you know and your EMM using Zebra OEM config to push those those settings. Um, soon, stage now will offer that capability as well. Uh, but I don't want to jump ahead. Anyway, so the, the key takeaway for this is that the settings that you deploy don't happen instantly. You have to remove the dock and then redock, and then the Zebra Workstation Connect app relaunches and, and the settings take effect. The device user can override admin configured app shortcuts created on the desktop. So if there's, you know, keep that in mind. If you're deploying shortcuts and and you don't want those to change, um, well, they could change uh, by the user. Uh, and again, those changes are, are applied the next time the device is docked. This is important. The managed configuration settings for device orientation and screen resolution persist after the Zebra Workstation Connect app is removed. So before you deploy those settings, you should be very sure that they're the settings that you want in your organization because they, they can't be erased without removing everything else. Um, so uh, here, I'll go um, to the next item related. Um, persistent managed configuration settings can be cleared only by performing an enterprise reset. So in other words, again, make sure you're sure of those settings before you deploy them, because to undo that has to um, requires a pretty disruptive process. Enterprise reset can get you back to the previously configured um, the device settings for your organization. A factory reset makes it just like it was out of the box. So those are those can be disruptive. Apps sometimes exhibit. Um, an inoperable maximize function on the title bar and or minimize and restore from the taskbar icon. In such cases, um, th this has to do with login. Um, it, th there's a whole series of issues that relate to login. It's a pretty tricky thing to program for um, on, the two, on the two screens. So um, the, the essential advice is to com complete any login process before you dock the device or before you start trying to use an app in desktop mode. So if your app requires login credentials, which I would expect many, many enterprise apps do, then you want to instruct your users to complete the logins beforehand. Um, yeah, which is basically what that just said. When unlocking the device, clicking on an app in the secondary screen moves the focus to that app and enables input from an external keyboard. So this means that um, when the device is initially unlocked, um, clicking on an app in the secondary screen, if let's say it's unlocked and it launches an app on the secondary screen, um, it enables input from that. So it, it's conceivable that you could be looking at your secondary screen and not having input. You might need to click on it in order to have it start accepting your input. So that's pretty self-explanatory. 
Some applications that require a login hide the taskbar when opened in the secondary screen if the user is not logged in. They hide the taskbar when opened in the secondary screen. To prevent this, again, just log in before you, um, you know, uh, before you launch the app, before you finish launching the app, complete the login process. Some apps with a login page in the secondary screen may require more than one click of the title bar close button. And that's due to cascading activities on the login page. So again, login, tricky stuff. Sign-in buttons and other UI elements sometimes are partially obscured by the taskbar when the app is moved or moved to or launched in the secondary screen. Um, this requires launching the app in the secondary screen in a maximized state or completing the login process in the primary screen. Again, just try to log in, try to instruct your users to log in on the, um, on the primary screen whenever possible. Um, about device locking, um, Zebra recommends disabling secure startup when using desktop mode. Um, this is controlled by the dev admin CSP. So administrators will be familiar with that CSP and configuring that through stage now or um, OEM config. Uh, secure startup is the process that requires a login um, to start the device. Login dialog boxes of apps that require user credentials do not appear on the secondary screen, period. If you're running an app and there's a login, it's going to be on the primary screen. It's not gonna show up on the secondary. Such apps can be used in secondary screen once the credentials are provided on the primary. Um, and then once docked, the user can unlock the device only from the primary screen. The secondary screen cannot be used to interact with the device screen lock. So, you know, pretty self-explanatory. And that's just, we're just talking about the, the screen lock, not user credentials of an app. And there you have it. Um, we'll, we'll go over to questions. And just to say, if we don't answer your question here, please use one of the contact um, emails uh, or areas on the screen you're looking at now to submit your question. And we'll do our best to get it answered as soon as possible. Once again, the URL for all of the content that you've seen in this presentation is available at techdocs.zebra.com slash ZWC. My name is Eddie Correa, and it's been my pleasure to introduce you to Zebra Workstation Connect. Thank you very much, and we hope you enjoy using the solution.